Hello everyone. Welcome back to Data Science Monster. In today's video, we will just take a problem statement and see how to proceed with end-to-end -end machine learning project. So before proceeding with that, let us see the problem statement. So here the problem statement is about to find whether the loan will be approved or not. So there are two classes here, approved or rejected. It is a classification model because it has two classes like approved or rejected. In short, I can say the dependent variable is categorical. So it is a classification model. And just because there are two classes, it is binary classification model. First and foremost, we need to import the basic and the most important libraries like NumPy, Pandas for standardization purpose, standard scalar, min-max scalar, and for uh, balancing the data set, I have used the packages and for visualization also. Then we want to explore with the power of classifiers. So we will be working with ensemble methods like add a boost, gradient boosting, random forest, and also support vector machine, linear models, and the XG boost also. So the next part is about the evaluation tools. It is really crucial to assess the performance of the models without using metrics like classification reports, accuracy scores, confusion matrices, and F1 scores. But uh, not least, we are also supposed to go ahead with the data processing functions like a train, test, a split, encoding the labels, and also we would be able to handle the warnings. So after that, if you see, I have done with the initial setup. Now, please make sure to stay tuned as we would be you know, putting these tools into action uh, in the upcoming slides. So if you find this content helpful, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting machine learning tutorials. Thanks for watching. So now I just want to set the theme for this, right? You can also go ahead with the default theme, but I really want to go ahead with a certain theme. So I have just set a theme about like what should be the font, what should be the font scale and also the palette, the most importantly font size and also the background. Then I have loaded the data set. So once I do that, I'm trying to print the sample of the 10 observations. You can see that how it is looking like, right? For example, if you set the background gradient, you can also try with a different color map. So here you can see that 12,876. You can see that this is the maximum in applicant income, right? That's been read in color. And likewise, if you see this 4,000 is the maximum one read in color. Like, uh, likewise, if you see all the cases, you can understand, right? The highest value has been shown in red color. So you can also explore this and see whether it is giving any interesting information. So there are 614 rows and 13 columns in my data set. And I want to study about the descriptive statistics of the data. I could see there are 614 observations and you can see like a 592 observations in loan amount, which means that there are missing values here, here, and here also, right? And the describe would be working only for the numerical attributes. So I'm getting the entire descriptive statistics. Uh, so I want to proceed with the visualization part. So I have created a list of all the Categorical columns, you can see all the categorical columns I have uh, you know, listed down. So when I explain this code, what you are supposed to do, I will give the link of the data set in the description. 
you can download the data set and pass the video, write the code and check. Because if you watch like a movie, uh, you can understand at that moment. But later, if you try to recollect, you may not be able to understand. In case if it throws any error, please put in the comment so that I can guide you with that. So I have just created the list now. And then I want to proceed with the plots. So you can see that I am doing only for these columns. So the name of the columns is categorical columns. So I am trying with that. So basically I will come to know about the distribution over here. Right. So now this code actually gives the subplot grid. And it is giving the count plot. So I would be knowing about various categorical attributes. If you take this one, for example, male count has been more for not approved, right? Because you can see that this uh, green is for S, which means male count is male count or here even if you take that these two basically see that approved, right? So approval count is more than not approved. Right. So that is the inference you could bring it over here. Right. So let me repeat it. Green stands for yes. I can say that male and female approval rate is more than the rejected one. Right. So like this, you can come up with the inferences. Uh, if you have any doubt, please do not hesitate. You can put it in the comment also. Then I have also created a list for numerical columns. And I am proceeding with the box plot over here. So when you write this code, please pass the video, write the code. So now you can see that three different box plots we are getting. And I could see lot of outliers here, right? You can see outliers here. If you have no idea about outliers, Please look into the video of outliers so that you could you know, easily understand this. So likewise, here if you see, I have used two attributes, loan status along with applicant income, loan status along with co-applicant income, loan status and loan amount. So uh, the inferences I could see here is like uh, there are a lot of uh, outliers, right? So maximum, like you can see, only in this case, you can see there is the difference, much difference, right? So also I have tried with a single attribute, applicant income, loan amount and co-applicant income. I could see a lot of outliers also. So now I want to also know about the distribution of applicant income by gender and loan status. So you can see that this blue stands for yes and this stands for no, right? So the x-axis I have taken, applicant income. So now once I do that, I can go ahead with the correlation also. I can see the correlation between applicant income and loan amount has been higher. Right, Point 0.5, not higher, but I can say that moderately correlated. Right, it is very obvious. And now sometimes what will happen here, there is five cross five, it's fine. Sometimes when you uh, you know, uh, work with this, like uh, the uh, number of columns could be more. So you can just print the lower part or the upper part of the correlation matrix. That is what I have shown here. So now I can also go ahead with the pair plot. Always remember, you are supposed to take the dependent variable as Q. Right? The dependent variable as Q. So once this has been done, you can see how the attributes are being you know, presented or distributed. I could see there are object data types. So which we have to go ahead with the technique of encoding. I could also see a lot of missing values in my data set. So now I want to see or visualize the missing values. So I'm proceeding with the heat map. I could see that there are a lot of missing values. So now I want to check 
whether the non categorical variables which means the numerical variables are normally distributed or not right basically we have already come across there are lot of outliers so you can pass the video here and you can write down the code and now you can see that mean of uh, applicant income is 5000 oh, right mode is 2500 median is 3812 which means that it is not normally distributed we know that if the data is normally distributed then mean median mode are equal but you can see that all the three are actually different not only that you can check with co-applicant income and also the loan amount so this is giving more clarity that the data is not normally distributed right so let me also plot it and see whether the data is normally distributed or not. Only these three columns I'm considering applicant income, co-applicant income and loan amount. So you can see that the peak is at the, peak is at the side, right? Again here, again here. So these three are giving hint that the data is not normally distributed. The data is not normally distributed so what i'm going to do now i want to get right i want to see the value counts gender married self-employed dependents so i'm trying to get the counts of it and after that i want to replace the missing values with a mode uh, and also the dependence column you can see a challenge right the dependence column look like a number, but if you check the dependence column, there is like a 0, 1, 2, 3 plus, which means that it is considered as an object. You can check with the previous code. Can you see that it has been an object data type? So what I'm supposed to do, I need to convert it into an integer, right? And then I can proceed with that. So now you can see that I have replaced all the missing values, right? So please uh, pass the video, uh, take a screenshot and write the code, or you can pass the video and write the code, that would be better. Now, if I visualize the heat map, there are no missing values. Now let me rewrite the same code to see whether the outliers are removed or not, whether it is uh, normally distributed or not, right? So this is the previous code. I'm showing for the new one. So I have not done any step, right? So uh, previous step, what I have done, the missing value part I have done. Now I could see the data is not normally distributed. So I'm going ahead with a technique to convert it into normal distribution so what i'm doing i'm changing the data to log value right so i have taken applicant income and i want to go ahead with a logarithm right logarithm of this then once i do it if i check it you can see that almost the applicant income values are closer co-applicant income ignore about this because most of the co-applicant were not working. That's why it has been zero all the time. Loan amount again, if you see that it has been the close, right? So this is giving a hint to that it is getting normal distributed. Let us now plot and see. Can you see that now it is at the center? Here, also here. Now this has been at the center. Now what can I do? I could see that some of the columns are objects. Either I can go ahead with one heart encoding or label encoding. This time I have done with a label encoding. So once I have written this, right? LE dot fit underscore transform. So you can see that I have written this. And then now this is B, you no, know, encoded. So what will happen now? It would be changing like a 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So once this has been done, I have taken loan status in y-axis because that is the dependent variable and remaining attributes, 
except uh, loan status and loan ID because loan ID is not essential. I have taken it in X axis and then I'm proceeding with the model building, right? So how you can go ahead with the model building is like generally how we do like a logistic regression, KNN, support vector machine, naive model, everything you can do it. Everybody please use the random state as one so that everyone can get the same result completed. And please put the score in the comment. Then we can have a discussion. Furthermore, how we can improve the score of the model. Hope it is clear to everyone. Thank you so much.